No, we can keep going now. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure I got that yeah. set. Save that. Maybe yeah. move or something that way. Grandpa, how much did a combine cost? Then we didn't have a combine. Well, a picker. <laughs> I mean, a picker. Yeah. Like, the you first, know. The first one. What your great, what your dad would have bought first? Then I mean, did he buy a corn picker? You then? had to put your name in for a combine. They were racing, and one that so and Harry Barker happened to have one on on order down in there, and by God, we took that. He could get one, and so we bought that one. I don't know what that would have cost. It wasn't a thousand dollars, I don't think. But what year would that be? <laughs> 46, I wonder. Was that during the war? Yeah, yeah. yeah it could have been. Yeah, it, it's definitely. You couldn't buy tires, you know. Recap tires. Yeah, but the first know. combines were pulled by horses, weren't they? Huh? Didn't they have, did the horses pull the first combines? Well, some, very few. I think we did. I think we had horses on the first. No, one. we could pull ours with a tractor. Track on the first ones. And then, of course, after a while, I traded combines every time. Every got every time I got one, it was worse than one I had. <laughs> <laughs> one year I got this water hemp, and Mark was all about that the worst weed you can have. And I bought a new pair of canvases to put on that combine. I went out that day. And, and, and th th that was such a bad week, and I ruined those canvases. So I went to Dick Cavalier and I said, you got some kind of a combine that'll thrash that oats out there and, and thrash them without me stopping, I'll buy it. Well, but, but he could get one, you know. <laughs> and the first one like that cost me 600 uh, 1600 but that would have been in the 40s. Mm -hmm. If Dick Cavalier, you bought it from him. Yeah. Because he's younger than we are. Yeah, it, well, it might have been close to 50 because people were buying new combines then. Well, I know. It's when, we, when we got the first combine, it might have been 44, 45. Most of them always seem to be broke down all the time. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Corn pickers did too. <laughs> and then you had a corn picker though, right? Yeah. You had the combine and a corn picker. That took picker. a long time for dog dad and a corn picker. He would afraid that it all stay out in the field and he didn't want that. Of course we had we had livestock then. We could throw uh, the fields are all fenced in. Mm -hmm. You you could get the, the cat, livestock out there to clean it up. And, and, and they did too. If you had a bunch of old hogs uh, big ones already and and cows, they would clean those fields up better than they are today. I mean, didn't have so much volunteer corn, you know, mm -hmm. they could turn livestock out there and the window stayed open. Yeah, we had a lot of down corn because they didn't have the hybrids like we got now. The corn, Dad's the first one ever bought a hybrid corn and he bought it from Yankton, South Dakota, that radio station, he listened to that. And they were advertising some corn. And he bought that. He got corn taller than his ceiling. And whatever, everybody wondered what kind of corn that was. <laughs> it was a hybrid corn. It wasn't any around. But it stood straight, though. That was a bad problem. It always talks that broke off. Then they came in, they worked hard. These people that picked corn, I didn't do much of it. Yeah. But they worked hard. The hired men would work like for three and a half cents a bushel, something like that. Would the hired men be from the local towns, or would yeah, they be coming well, from yeah, further they, away? They would come up, the Missourians from south. We had some from uh, Missouri. And they would yeah, come up here to pick corn. They were young. They were 17, 16, 17 well, years old when they come up. And Lived with you for a couple years because that's what the know, country are doing with these Mexicans up, that come up there. Too. Up people down there. They get them for yeah. some labor that we don't, we don't, we have nobody in this kind of country to do that kind of labor. That's how they get into this. It was country. almost like getting the immigrants in from Mexico, you know, to do that kind of work that way. Sure. But they were reliable and nice, they were nice people. 
They do a lot of gardening business down along the border down there. And there's a there's a lot of a lot of them used for that. But I I think a lot of the farmers well, I know Dad did kind of helped them after a while. They stayed here mm -hmm. and, that, and got married and helped them get started. You know. Well, and Dad, that, yeah. Yeah, I heard man but he come over from Germany. And he had another fellow that come with him. Franz Sherloff was that guy's name. We always laughed at that name. <laughs> so he knew guy. how to pick corn. Well, he went out the field and Dad got such a kick out of Angela. He tried to act like he was a corn picker and he had all them stalks all broke to me. <laughs> he, he tried. He couldn't figure out what. He knew how to pick corn, he said. Well, you didn't really know how either. What was his name again, Grandpa? Crunch fell off, I believe. Crunch fell off. Fr Fr Fritz or Fritz? Fritz? Something, something like that it was. Franz. That's an interesting name. <laughs> <laughs> well, the two of them went out there and they, my dad got such a kick out what they did to the corn stalks. He, he knew what they tried to do. <laughs> That they worked hard. People worked hard then. So you kind of mentioned that some of the the challenges of working during the war, no rubber or no new tires. Or do you remember anything else from during World War Two? Grandma, you always said candy hose. <laughs> cigarettes. Everybody, they couldn't get cigarettes and all. Couldn't get nylons and nylons and sugar and stuff. And they issued these. Coupons, you know. Every people were allotted so much. And then, of course, there was trading. You had for a cigarette, you'd give them to somebody else that smoked, or you'd get nylon for that, you know, back. So you kind of buy them, them, them and then trade them? Yeah, trade around. Them. They were rationed. So was Ration, gasoline. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They were rationed. And I used to go to Electric Park, and if I'd bring a car stamp, that's what we got stamped to buy that yeah. gas. They'd trade me in a whole carton of cigarettes if I wanted. It, it, was, me that. it wow. was quite a system when they got that rationing in, in our, you know, during the war, really. And a lot of things you couldn't everything get. Everything was rationed around here. You'd yeah. recap tires you, you, you'd, you'd buy. you maybe make one trip to Barlow and you're lucky if you got back and then blow it out. <laughs> the cab would fly off again, you know. Wow. Grandma, didn't you say that that one gentleman yeah. would save you back was, some was a Jewish, uh, Jewish man that run a clothing store, a dress shop. Store in Waterloo. Yeah. Come over there. He was the nicest person, and of course he only had a certain amount of nylons he could sell. But some of us girls at work, you know, afterward, he he'd be sure you no, know, we bought them with our coupons right. and stuff. But he kind of let us save them back. Yeah. And, uh, he was he was really nice about that. A doctor would come out to the farm and make a house did. call for maybe. Twenty-five dollars or less. Of course, he did that for you and Marsha too. Doctor Benson used to come out when Marsha went in on convulsions. I can remember Doctor <laughs> Benson had to come out. Here. Was that me or Mark? That, that was way. probably me. Actually. Mark had the Mark. convulsions. Yeah, he had the convulsions. Yeah, and that was a good thing. Well, you did. You just walked most of like. But but. They didn't always get you better then, you know. They didn't have no, they didn't, you know, they some of the things they needed to keep their lives. They did the best they could, you know, <laughs> what stuff they had. That's right. <laughs> well, when I worked at that transmission plant, you know, during the war, you walk. I walked a mile every day to work. Is what I did. By the time you stood and waited for a crowd of buses, bus, you stood on them anyhow. You know, then. So you you lived up in Waterloo at that time. Yeah. Do you live with some other girls or live with the family? Well, see, or? I went to Gates College, and I just, when I got through with that, I went to, they had this defense plant. John Deere's had a defense yeah. plant there, transmission and spare parts. Well, that's where I ended up, at that place in. And I know we, I walked way up, from way up 4th Street down to where John Deere's is, we did, you know, where, of course, there's other did too, we walked there. But I don't think I tried now. Probably get knocked over him. You got off working <laughs> in the dark or something like that. That was one thing you didn't worry about. 
somebody shoot no, me. No, you yeah. didn't. You didn't. You we'd walk at night places, no. and we didn't worry about it, you know anything like that happening. So were you, were you guys during the war? Were you guys then like fully aware of what's going on in the other countries? I think so. And were, was it scary at times? Were you it scared was, at all of like getting water, in bed? We used to have blackouts every once in a while. Yeah. We didn't have a war then we when we were uh, little. I'm talking World War II. Yeah, well, That's what I'm 41. talking. Oh, 40, yeah, sorry, 47. One. Yeah. See, well, I Dad was over there and was in the war of it. World War I. That's yeah. World War One. No yeah. way did he want me over there. Yeah. Well, this is World War II in 41. Yeah, I yeah. guess my question is yeah. about World War II. Yeah. Was That's the late, the last, for, that's the one we went to. Yeah, like, was that? He wouldn't, he wouldn't even talk about it. Yeah. I'd be scared. What? Well, I guess I'm just. But, you know, you, we just, you were aware of it, and it was just something. I don't know. It was kind of scary when the sirens would go, and they'd have, you'd have, they'd have to pull their shades and turn the lights all went off, you know. Yeah. Those were just practice. Okay. Shades, or practice warnings that way. Did you or your family buy war bonds? Mm -hmm. Remember that? Yeah, I think they did. Yeah, it's in and then after they closed it. They got any money to do it with. I mean, that yeah. was a big deal, damn. The fact that they took it right out of your salary. So oh. Most people had to take it right out of your salary. And then after I worked at the bank, that was the main thing I did, was issue war bonds there mm. on top of it. This farm over there next to Burnmark Farm, that, that didn't bring 14000 during the war. They had to sell it. They couldn't keep it. And, that's all it bought. Now, not very long ago, I don't know what we give for it, but I better be no, I don't know. Well, he wouldn't have been as much as Eric did a few years later. But. Of course, compared to what you got for wages then, yeah. and what they do now, you know, things weren't that high. I don't know how it bothered enough. You didn't earn big money then, at least I didn't. And yet you got by. But I don't think they took any Social Security. <coughs> Rose Hill thought I put Social Security in. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And that, you know, it's done on video. That didn't come around until after 37, Social Security. Well, with some of these others, like Workman's Cop and all this, I don't think that come out. I don't want to get. Sure. Do you have any, going back a little further, do you have any memories of the hard times of the 1930s? I don't really. What, what? The Depression? The yeah. Depression or the yeah. Dust Bowl or anywhere? Yeah. I don't think we was aware of too much. It's just no. life to you. Of course, you were used to yeah. not having much. You, you know, that, that's where people live. Yeah. Right? And they, I think people that didn't have work, it probably was hard. They couldn't find work. But sure. the farming people used you're to do that a they were kind of used to going from page to penny to penny or something like that. Well, they came around begging them for work, kind of. So men who wanted to be hired out? Yeah, yeah. that was it. You had no trouble finding somebody that wanted to work. During really busy times like harvest time, would you hire a few extra people? Yeah, for a day or a week? or. And most homes had, I know we even Well, generally, he got done with the hired man. Because we always had a hired girl, too. I mean, a woman that worked mm -hmm. in, the in the house all the time, too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes not year-round or every week, but most of the time. Mm -hmm. He said when you got sick, then instead of going to a nursing home, they had nurses that go around. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Stodro from Clute Terry used to be one that was around here a lot. Well, and babies were born at home with something like a midwife or mm -hmm. you know, a doctor and a nurse would come out, you know, and that uh, way they weren't, you know, I don't know when they started going in the hospitals. It had to be, well, I suppose it was about the 30s, maybe, people started going in the hospital. I hope we never have to go. But it was cold. We're going through more today than we should be going. There's some people living in heck now, gotta be. 
Because a lot of them getting killed every day. I think that's why it's emphasizing refugees so much, when they have no home and food and stuff. It, no, it's just supposed to be terrible. Which, how you're going to get through the day. So, Vernon, you, did you volunteer or were you uh, drafted to go up to St. Paul? They, they drafted me and I got up in Fort Challenge for Oh, I was up there about five days, and I had flat feet that were pretty damn flat, and they <laughs> didn't, 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 didn't. That and they gave me a big check when it come to my heart. If I had heart trouble then already, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But the two of them, they wouldn't take me. I was four after four then. That was for World War II? Yeah. yeah. In and 41. In 41. Right. That was before you were married, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah all was before we were married. Okay. okay. Right. They wouldn't dig anybody with a lot of high See, I graduated in 41. Okay. I, it had been in uh, May, and then that following December 7th, mm -hmm. in 41, was when it uh. So it was about six months. I was already living. Going to school in Waterloo after I graduated, I went to sure. school up there at Gates. Okay. Stuff, for the summer and stuff. Okay. They deferred some people though to help, you know, like my dad could have been done alone. And he needed a hard man and they deferred some people. Sure. Well, some of the industries they had to keep people, you know, to keep them going too. When they finally took me I had a train ride from Marshalltown up to Minneapolis. And I was up there for about five days and they sent me home. And I was sitting in one of them passenger cars and they said, you know, if you don't get out of here and go to the next car, you're going to go to Owine. I knew I didn't want to go to Owine. <laughs> so I moved, I had to move. <laughs> So were you, Grandpa, were you happy that you didn't have to go over the war after that you got... My dad was all quiet. Your dad was? Yeah. Were most of your peers, uh, did they go? Or did a lot of them stay and help at the farms? Well, there was farmers that, that went in that Powell over here. He, he was farming with his brother and they took him. Well, the Robs, oh, they took some farmers. The Robs all went except Tuff. There was here and there. There was people. Well, he didn't pass either. He had a. He had a yeah, he had some. Something well, he different. had high blood pressure. Is what he had. Some of them weren't. And then some did take when it really hurt them. Yeah, the eyesight had to be too. pretty good, and some of them got out with our eyesight. <coughs> But I mean, there were cases where some people went and it made a hardship, you know, on the fathers that was trying to keep things going. Yeah. But I think it depended. Sometimes I think some got deferred and towards the end of the year when some were coming back, then they got another batch in or something like that. I don't know. Cause there some of them were in some awful bad places that. That Vietnam, uh, that was after our time. Mm -hmm. That That's a bad deal what they went through. You know, they got home and they act like those guys weren't a you know, bad servant. You know, they were in the worst of it down there. Well, there's no place worse good, no matter where. Not good well, it's pretty bad down there. Well, it was bad with, with any of them. When they had that bombing in there. The Japanese bomb nose up in where was it? Pearl Harbor. You know, I always think back. That was now, terrible. What they did there. Jim Winters, you know, he was at Pearl Harbor when that was mm -hmm. bombed. You know, Jimmy used to sit around quiet lots of times and stuff. And, I, and then, of course, his brother he had a brother killed too before him. And I, Jim didn't say anything. He never said much. But I. 
when I look back and think how he was different times, I think it just bothers him. 